The Syrian Arab army carries out qualitative operations against mercenary terrorists hideouts, inflicting heavy losses on them. Russia reiterates rejection of any UN resolution that justifies interference in Syria. And confrontations flare up between demonstrators and Al Saud in Al Qatif and Al Khalifa in Al Manama. Good afternoon. Welcome to News Bulletin. I'm Dani Nizam, sitting in for Ala Ibrahim. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov underlined his country's intent to push for adopting Geneva Agreement on the crisis in Syria at the forthcoming meeting of the UN Security Council later this month. We affirm to the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton that we will call on the Security Council to adopt Geneva Agreement, Lavrov said. Lavrov reiterated his country's principled stance, which calls for dialogue to resolve the crisis and rejects imposing sanctions, adding that Russia has never supported any odds against Syria as they would achieve nothing. He considered that Moscow and Washington want Syria to become a free, democratic and prosperous country under an elected government, calling on the foreign influential powers to press the conflict sides in Syria to sit around the dialogue table. Lavrov underlined that Russia at the same time backs a conference that will be convened by Syrian opposition groups later this month. In Aleppo, Syrian armed forces carried out qualitative operations against terrorists hideouts, inflicting heavy human and material losses on them. The terrorists launched two mortar bombs targeting the Mar Michel and the monastery of Nunes in Al Azizia neighborhood in Aleppo, causing material damages to the two buildings. The armed forces confronted the terrorists who tried to attack the Midan police station in Aleppo, killing tens of them. Within the same context, the armed forces also targeted the bases and hideouts of the armed terrorist groups in Bustan al Basha area, inflicting heavy losses upon them. The armed forces killed tens of terrorists in the Qastal al-Harami area and the armed forces units confronted the armed terrorist groups which were trying to enter into Aleppo from the Bayadin area inflicting heavy losses upon their members. A unit from the armed forces also eliminated a group of terrorists in the Maysar area and the engineering units dismantled a number of explosive devices that were planted by terrorist groups in the local market in the Saif ad dawla area. The clashes also erupted among the terrorists in the Saif ad dawla area after many fled of fear of the armed forces, leaving behind their weapons. The armed forces raided a basement in the Saif ad dawla neighborhood and they discovered a field hospital inside there with medicine and medical equipment and oxygen cylinders in addition to respiratory devices that were stolen from the public and private hospitals. A unit from the Syrian armed forces headed to Al Tadamun neighborhood and other nearby neighborhoods. Ahmed Warm, a welcome from the people living there. The armed forces chased the armed terrorists who fired mortars on Al Yarmouk camp, killing and injuring a number of civilians, and opened fire on ambulances. For its part, the popular committee Al Yarmouk camp in Damascus underlined that the massacre perpetrated by the armed terrorist groups at the camp resulted in the death of 10 martyrs in an attempt to punish the Palestinians for rejecting to take part in the conspiracy that targets Syria. The committee pointed out in a statement yesterday that there is a devilish scheme that works on amassing the Palestinians to target the Syrian Palestinian unity by committing two similar massacres on Friday during one month and instigating a number of mosques. The committee added that these terrorist groups are killing and terrorizing the Palestinian refugees in Syria and imposing a strike on shops. Six civilians and law enforcement members yesterday were killed and several others injured when a booby-trapped electric bicycle exploded near Al Rukniya Mosque in Ruknidi neighborhood in Damascus. A source of the governor said that the bicycle went off when the worshippers were leaving the mosque. Six civilians and law enforcement members were martyred and several others injured in the bombing and private properties were damaged.
A booby-trapped car yesterday exploded in front of the Justice Palace and Ministry of Information buildings on Medzi Highway in Damascus, causing material damage. News correspondents said that the blast triggered fire in a number of cars there and destroyed the facade of many residential buildings and shops. In the farms area in Al-Qsir and Homs countryside, a unit from the Syrian Armed Forces stormed in an operation center used by the armed terrorists in that area to plan their attacks, which target civilians and destroy public and private properties. A source at the governor has said that the attack resulted in the death and injury of all the terrorists who were hiding there. Meanwhile, another unit the armed forces clashed with an armed terrorist group that tried to run away from Babwood neighborhood towards al Qundaq Street, killing two of them and injuring three others. Syria's Grand Mufti Dr. Ahmed Badreddin Hassoun and Greek Orthodox Patriarch Assistant Bishop Luke Al Khoury called Syrian communities in Russia and independent countries to join efforts to defend the country. The remarks came during their meeting with members of the Syrian community in Russia in Moscow, attended by the Syrian Ambassador Riyad Haddad. Dr. Hassoun stressed that dialogue is the safest way out of the current crisis, adding that Syria needs all of its people to stand in the face of its enemies who are threatening to target it under the UN 7th chapter with the aim of meeting the Israeli interests. For his part, Bishop al Khoury said that Syria is sacred and it should be preserved and protected, adding that the West and the USA, in addition to Israel, which is occupying Palestine, the cradle of the Jesus Christ in place of ascension of Prophet Muhammad, want to sabotage and destroy Syria. Head of the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, Peter Mora, described his recent visit to Syria and his meetings with the Syrian officials as positive and transparent, stressing that the ICRC will return to resume on the ground work and will cooperate with the Syrian citizens in need for, of humanitarian aid. In a press conference held in Geneva on Friday, Mora said that his talks in Damascus focused on the humanitarian issues, describing them as transparent that emphasized the importance of enhancing humanitarian aid amid the current crisis in Syria. Answering a question on his talks with President Bashar al-Assad, Mora said, the talks focused on humanitarian issues and President al-Assad showed commitment to cooperate with us in a host of issues of paramount importance for the ICRC. He noted that he discussed with the Syrian authorities about the importance of speeding up work and that the Red Cross and Red Crescent are granted access to the biggest number of civilians inside Syria, especially in relation to health and medical issues, adding that he is expecting the positive outcomes of his visit to materialize on the ground. He also called upon all parties in Syria to engage in a political dialogue, emphasizing the importance of halting violence. Asked about the numbers related to the needs of the Syrian people, Mouru said, I know numbers that circulated across the world on the humanitarian needs inside Syria, which I admittedly cannot affirm or deny. He said that the ICRC is delivering humanitarian aid in an independent and transparent way, without anybody's interference, adding that it seeks to provide water and food and to meet the needs of the crisis-hit citizens. In Turkey, Deputy Chairman of the Turkish Labour Party, Biram Yurçiçak, filed a criminal complaint against the Turkish officials who established Abadin camp, which is devoted to planning criminal operations carried out by the armed terrorist groups in Syria. Chichak said that Abadin camp is illegal and was founded with the aim of carrying out terrorist acts against the neighboring state, Syria. He referred to the press reports recently released about the leaders of the armed groups who stressed that they were trained in Abadin camp to carry out attacks against Syria. Massive demonstrations took to the streets in the eastern area of Saudi Arabia protesting the oppression of Al Saud and demanding the release of detainees. The demonstrators, including women and young men, gathered in the center of Al-Qatif shouting slogans that condemn al saud and their oppressive rule. They demanded for the release of all prisoners, especially Sheikh Nimr Baqir and Nimr, who has been detained for two months. In Bahrain, Al Khalifa forces opened fire and used gas bombs to disperse the demonstrators in Al Manama and other Bahraini cities. Several demonstrators were wounded, some of them seriously.
And now it's over to Khalid Saqbani with the economic news. But for more information, you can visit our website, syrianline.sy. God bless you and God bless our beloved Syria.